So we finished chapter four last time, what we're going to do there. Um, we don't do anything out of chapter five in here. Six one I skip. Um, six one is chapter six is geometry. Okay, six one we're doing angles and rays and lines and things, and I just don't think it's as practical. I mean, it's not as useful. So um, we're going to do six two and six three. Okay. And then we've got two other sections that'll be on test two. Okay. And so two other sections, okay, we'll have um, seven one and seven two, okay, and that'll be it for test two. Okay. Anybody have any hot questions or anything before we keep going? Another? Yeah, oh, sorry. Anything? Okay. <laughs> All right. Okay, so in section six two, we are doing some, or we're gonna look at some review information, hopefully stuff you've seen before, and then um, doing some calculations with uh, flat shapes, okay, two dimensional stuff. And then in section six three, we'll do some volume and surface area dealing with three dimensional shapes. Okay. So, Let's look, so this, this first stuff, hopefully you've seen before. Um, if not, it's okay. Um, we'll, we'll go do a brief review here. And so, um, the, the main goals in this section, we wanna talk about perimeter and area. We do have some other little small topics thrown in here um, as well, so. Uh, let's look, so. Uh, first, a little brief review information. Okay, if we're dealing with a circle, um, we have two important lines that we can draw on a circle that we're concerned with. Okay, if we go halfway across the circle, so from the center out to the edge of the circle, what we call a radius. And if we draw a line all the way across the circle through the center, that's what we call a diameter. So um, the main thing is just not getting these two confused. Okay. So if we are given the diameter and we need the radius, we can divide by two. If we're given the radius and need the diameter, we can multiply by two. So we can, we have one, we can figure out the other. Okay. And then, just as a side note here, okay. any line that you draw across the circle, so like if we had a line segment over here, those all have a name. The diameter is a special one, but anybody know what you call any line that crosses a circle? That's a, just trivia at this point, it's not. A chord, that's it, yeah, you call it a chord. Okay. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, you call it a chord, oh, thank you. Okay. You call it a chord. So, uh -huh. So the main ones we're concerned about, we're worried about the diameter. The diameter is a chord, but um, the radius is not because it doesn't go all the way across, but I'm sidetracked. Sorry. That's circle stuff, okay. Um, the other things we want to review just a little bit is polygons, okay, are polygons. Okay. Okay. So any figure that we can make by connecting some line segments together, we call a polygon. Um, if we, we gotta have three or more connected together, there's no way you can take two line segments and connect, connect them together to make a closed space. Okay. So three or more we call a polygon. Okay. And you got the basics you're familiar with, you got triangle, four-sided we'll call quadrilateral, Five-sided, we've got pentagon. Six-sided, we call hexagon. Anybody know seven? We have seven-sided. Sep yeah, septagon is is yeah that works. There's a little bit more common as hept heptagon, H-E-P. Yeah, sept is acceptable also. 
Eight's easier. Octagon, yeah. Commando nine. It's nonagon, N O N. Ten's decagon. And then I don't think eleven has a name. If it has a name, I don't know it. Okay. No, no, no. Okay, so once we get up to a certain point, we quit having goofy names that we give to the polygons. And instead, we give them a different goofy name. Um, we call them n-gons. n is just the number of sides. It's so like if we had something that was 18-sided, we would just call it a 18-gon. And you just start naming them by the number of sides once they get so big. And then here's a little bit of trivia, I guess, like the chord thing, okay? Um, so four-sided we call quadrilateral, that means four sides. And then we start naming them by the number of sides. So pentagon, hexagon, five sides, six sides, and we go all the way up and name them whatever gone number of sides. Okay. But just something to think about. What do we call the three-sided one? We don't even care about the number of sides. We call it a triangle. Okay, so yeah, that's right there, a triangle. Okay. So that one we name by the number of angles for some reason, and the rest of them we name by the number of sides. Okay. Not real sure why. Okay. Um, but you could you could call it a triangle, you could call it a trilateral. That would be three sided, right? There. Okay. Or the one I like the best would be trigon. Yeah. Call it a triangle. Just nerdy stuff you probably never thought about. Okay. Um, one other thing to mention here is that if we have polygons, they fall into one and two categories. The ones we're used to looking at, the ones that seem normal to us, are convex polygons. And the property that makes convex polygons special, you can either talk about the angles. You can say no angles over 180 degrees in a convex polygon. Or you can talk about drawing a diagonal. So a diagonal is just when we take one corner and connect it to another corner. So those corners we call a vertex. So if we have a convex polygon and we draw a diagonal, the diagonal is going to be inside the polygon. That's a convex polygon. Um, there are concave polygons. They're not as familiar looking to us. Okay. So have concave polygons, we may have angles over 180 degrees, or we can draw a diagonal, and it seems weird, but like on this one, we can draw a diagonal there, and that's outside the polygon. We can do the same thing on the first one. And so those diagonals we could draw in, and it would be outside the polygon, so that makes those concave. We don't talk about concave as much because they're not as well behaved. Okay. They don't have nice easy formulas like the convex polygons, so don't work with them as much in math class. But they are there. Okay, all the ones we're going to deal with today are convex. Convex. Um, all right, first little mini topic. We've got two really small topics that are kind of thrown in here. Um, the first one we're going to talk about is if we add all the angles up in a polygon. Okay, what happens? So some of you may remember okay, if you have a triangle and you add all the angles inside the triangle up, anybody remember what we get? How many degrees? 180 degrees, that's right. That's right. So we just want to take that idea and extend it to other polygons. So if we're looking at other polygons, so if we have a triangle, no matter what the triangle looks like, if we add up all the interior angles, angles inside the polygon, we're going to get 180. If we have a quadrilateral, we add up all of our angles, we're going to get 360. We have a Pentagon, we add up all the interior angles, we get 540. 
Okay, so the idea here is we want to look for a pattern. There is a pattern. You look every time we increase the number of sides, we're adding another 180 degrees. Okay. So we can kind of look at why that's happening. All right, so we set a triangle, we get 180 degrees, we add its interior angles up. So what if we have a rectangle? Right, that would be four-sided. So the idea here is you can take a rectangle and split it into two triangles. Two triangles would be two times 180, so 360 degrees. You can do the same thing for any convex polygon, so what if we have five-sided? We can split it up into three triangles, so three times 180. Okay, so our, our pattern is this, however many sides we have, let's look, so for three-sided, we multiply 180 by one, four-sided, we'll multiply 180 by two, or five-sided, we'll multiply 180 by three. So our pattern is we take the number of sides and subtract two, and then multiply that by 180 degrees. So here we've got the formula for an n-sided polygon. N is just the number of sides. So subtract two from that, multiply by 180 degrees. These are easy problems once you have the formula. So this will be on the formula sheet. Less. Let's look at one. Okay. It says find the, or what is the sum of the measures of the interior angles of an octagon? So that's a mouthful to word it like that. We're just adding up the inside angles. Okay. So octagon, how many sides does that have? Eight, yeah, eight. So here for an octagon, our N will be eight. So here's our formula again. So, I got a little ahead of myself there. So, 8 minus 2 times 180 degrees. 6 times 180 degrees. Well, what do we get? Uh, add up all the angles in the octagon. We get 1,080 degrees. We can do that for any any polygon. Okay. Question on that one? Once you have the formula, it's pretty easy. Right? You should try it once, multiply once. Okay. Our other little mini topic okay. um, for us to look at is this idea of Similar triangles. So we say two triangles are similar if the angles, if all three angles are the same, but they have different side lengths. Okay, so what we end up with when we're when we're talking about that is we'll end up with um, we'll have a big triangle and a little triangle, and they have the same basic shape. Those two would be similar. But if we had you know, something like this, these two would not be similar. They have different angles. So the powerful thing about having similar triangles is that the sides have to be in the same ratio to each other. So we just spent a chapter talking about ratios and proportional equations. That's one thing we can do with these similar triangles. If we're trying to figure out how long one of the sides is, and we can use the information we're given and set up a proportional equation and figure that out.
Let's take a look at one here. Okay. So, sometimes these seem like um, they're almost a little overwhelming with the information you're given, so just take it one little piece at a time. Okay. I know some people struggle with word problems, you get kind of overwhelmed. So, look at this. Okay. It says, suppose a man who's six feet tall, standing 20 feet from the base of a tree. The sun shines on the tree and on the man and casts a 30 foot shadow seen in the figure. We want to know how tall the tree is. Okay. So, this is the side we're trying to figure out the tree side. And our situation is, is that we have similar triangles. Okay, we have the big triangle made by the tree and its shadow. And then inside the big triangle, we have a little triangle right, made by the man and his shadow. A so little triangle inside a big triangle. Okay. So since these are similar, the proportions have to be the same. So we can, in this one, we can figure out how tall the tree is. Okay. So we want to set up a proportional equation. Okay, so one thing I see is that we're looking for the left side of the big triangle. Right. That's the one we want to know. And we know the left side of our little triangle, that's the height of the man. Right. So I'm going to use those two values as one side of my equation. And you can set them up different ways, and you can use different numbers. Um, with ratios, you just want to make sure your numbers correspond to each other, okay? But there are several different ways you can do them. So I'm going to set up, I know my person, my little triangle, and six feet on the top. And then on the bottom, I'm going to let that be the height of the tree. That's the number we're looking for. So I've got my little triangle number on the top, big triangle number on the bottom. And then we can set it up to another ratio. So I need some other number from my little triangle over some other number from my big triangle. And then we'll be able to solve. So we don't have any information on the diagonals. But we do have some information on the bottom side. What we're missing is this piece. We're missing the piece from the man's shadow. Okay. But we can figure it out. What? Anybody see what to do? Yeah, so the whole big triangle on the bottom is 30 feet, and the man's 20 feet away from the tree. So 30 minus 20 tells us the bottom of our little triangle is 10 feet. So then I can use the bottom side of my little triangle, 10 feet, over the bottom side of my big triangle. Be careful, don't use 20. We want the whole bottom side of the big triangle. So that's over 30 feet. And then we can solve our equation to figure out how tall the tree is. I'm gonna rewrite on the next slide just so we have a little bit of room. So. And they're all feet, so I'm not even going to write the units anymore. So I've got 6 over x equals 10 over 30. Just copying down my equation. And then how do we solve these proportional equations? Trials multiply. So I like my x to be on the left side, so I'm going to do x times 10 first. That's 10x. 6 times 30, 180. Then divide both sides by 10, so the tree is 18 feet tall. A similar triangle idea, and there's, there's not too many ways these problems can be set up. I they'll give you a different context, but you've always got a little triangle and a big triangle. set up a proportional equation. Questions on that one?
Anybody used on where we got any of the numbers we used or anything? Okay. Alright, so that's similar terms. Alright, so now we're kind of on to the main topics of the section. Okay, our two big ones are perimeter and area. Okay. So the first one we're going to look at is perimeter. We want the perimeter of a polygon. We're just adding up all the sides. Okay. So we're kind of thinking about like the distance if we walked around the polygon. Okay. That's our perimeter. Okay. We're just going to add up all the sides. And our textbook does give us some formulas for some different polygons, but to me, they're not real useful. If you just remember, add up all the sides. That's all you need to know for perimeter. Okay. Let's look at a few. So these are on a grid. And it doesn't tell us what kind of units each little grid mark is, but it just says count them as one unit. Okay. So let's do A here. I'm just going to, there are all the sides are one unit, so I'm just going to trace it and count. Okay. So I'm going to start at the top. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty. 11, 12. So remember, there's 12 units. B, we can probably do the same way. I don't just count. So, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten units. It could give us the numbers, right? I could say, like, this side's three and let's add them all up, but counting works the same way. C gives us a little bit of a problem because the diagonal side of the triangle on C doesn't line up with the grid, right? It cuts through. If we wanted to estimate, we could estimate what our parameter would be. That's not what we're after. We want an exact answer here. So we know this left side's one, bottom side's two. We need some other way to come up with that diagonal side. Anybody remember anything we can use? Yeah, so I'm sorry. Okay, we've got Pythagorean theorem here. So Pythagorean theorem tells us a squared plus b squared is c squared. Or c is our diagonal side. So we won't have to use Pythagorean theorem a whole lot, but it does creep in occasionally. So I'm going to redraw and we'll work Pythagorean theorem here. Okay, so this side's one, this side's two, this side we don't know. We've got Pythagorean theorem. So the long side, the side across from the right angle, is always C. The other two sides are A and B. It doesn't matter which one you call A, which one you call B. So here, if we fill in what we know, now one squared plus two squared should be C squared, or diagonal squared. So one times one is one, two times two is four. So C squared is gonna be five. But we don't want C squared, we just want C. Yeah, so take the square root of both sides, good. So square root of C is C. I mean, C square root of C squared is C. Square root of five, we could get a decimal approximation. We're trying to be exact here. Again, we would be estimating if we used a decimal there. So we figured out this side square root of five. So to get our perimeter, we add the sides together. And it's gonna be ugly, but it's okay. Get one plus two plus square root of five, and there's not a lot we can do there. It's just one plus two is three. Our perimeter here is just kind of an ugly number, but that, that's, that's correct. We're okay. 
Again, if we just wanted to be good enough, we could get a decimal estimate for square root of five. Estimate. Two point something. Main thing on that one is doing the Pythagorean theorem. Questions on that one? That's about as hard as parameter gets, having to do the Pythagorean theorem in there to figure out a side. Okay. Otherwise, we just add all the sides up and get our perimeter. Okay. Our other big topic is area, and it'll take us a little bit longer to go through area. Um, so if we have a polygon, area is like the space enclosed by the polygon, and area is in square units, and it's a two-dimensional measurement. So what we're talking about here is we're measuring like this blue space, and that's our area. This one. And in this case, the red border, right, if we added all those together, that would be our perimeter. So you can think about like areas like we're trying to cover up the shape or um, trying to paint it or something like that, the inside portion. Okay. All right, so we're going to look at um, a few formulas for some common polygons. Um, and then we'll try to figure out some area problems. Okay? So we'll start with the easiest case. If we have a rectangle, and then here, like I said, our textbook gives us these formulas for perimeter, but you really don't have to think about them if you don't want to. Just as long as you remember, add all the sides up, you're good on perimeter. We just want the area formula. Usually a rectangle is the one people remember, if you remember one. Okay. So a rectangle is just length times width. Okay. And it doesn't really matter which side you call length, which side you call width. Okay. Our book says the longer side's L and the shorter side's W, but that doesn't really make sense to me. So. Okay. There's our basic rectangle there. If we have a special rectangle where all the sides are the same length, what do we call that? A square, yeah, that's a square. So if we have a square, you can really just think about length times width still. It just turns out the length and the width are the same. If you really want to, you can think about a special formula for that. Okay. So here, the length would be s, the width would be s, so for area we get s squared. Okay. Um, I think it's worth mentioning here that when we square a number, this is what we're doing, we're finding area. Okay, so if we say s squared, we're saying what's the area of a square, that has a side that has sides of s, right? S times s, so that's weird. If you had a good algebra teacher, they talked about all that with you. If not, then sorry. Okay. So rectangle square, you can do them the same way, or you can just remember the square is special. It's okay. If you want to. Again, all these area formulas will be on the formula sheet. Just for today, you might want to get them written down so you have them for the assignment. But on the test, I'll give you a formula sheet. But they are in the slides if you miss one. The next common polygon we work with a lot is triangle. So our area formula there is... <coughs> Excuse me. I hate sneezing in a mask. Um, that's kind of what they're for. Uh, formula for the area of a triangle. Right. Got one half the base times the height. 
And the only thing we really have to be concerned with here is our triangle can be oriented different ways. And so like this one, the base is always gonna be the bottom side. And then here for height, we need a vertical line. So we've got like a dashed line in there for height. And they could be turned um, this way. So then this would be the height and this would be the base. That's okay. We do base times height and then do one half. So in case you've ever wondered why we have a one half in the area of triangle formula, what if we had rectangle, I'm gonna call one side B, one side H. So the area of our rectangle would be B times H. And the triangle is just half of a rectangle. So that's why we get the one half in our triangle area formula. And it's half of a rectangle. Uh, next one, a parallelogram. So the defining feature of a parallelogram is that we've got two sets of parallel sides. So here our top and bottom are parallel to each other. And then the left and right are parallel to each other. Okay. A rectangle is a parallelogram. Okay, but it, it's a special parallelogram where our, our angles are 90 degrees. So if we have different angles other than 90 degrees, we can get one that looks more like this. Okay. So it's just kind of like thinking about you push on a rectangle and make it lean over. Get a parallelogram. So since it's basically just like a rectangle, our area formula is almost the same as base times height um, to length times width. And here our height, we need to be a vertical line and the base is always gonna be the bottom again. And you can think about that little piece over on the left, we cut it off and slide it over to the right, we get a rectangle. And then it would be length times width, so. Okay. And one more, this one, this last one to me is less useful. Um, but you can use this formula if you want to. And that's the area of a trapezoid. So the idea of a trapezoid is that we've got two parallel sides. So here the top and bottom are parallel, and then the right and left are not parallel. Okay. Um, trapezoid is the shape we get if we take a triangle and chop part of it off. All right, so we chop off one of the points, so we cut off this piece. We get a trapezoid. Okay. There are formulas one half, base one plus base two, so that's just the top and bottom. It doesn't matter which one you call one and which one you call two times the height. And I say this formula is less useful than the others because a lot of the time if we're working with a trapezoid, um, we can take and think about it like a rectangle with two triangles instead. And you can just use the rectangle and the triangle formula. Um, or we can have a trapezoid that looks like this. And that's still a trapezoid. And in that case, you can split it into a rectangle and one triangle. But you can use that formula if you want to. Right. Questions on any of those? I know going over formulas is not really exciting. It's not really exciting for me either. Nothing? Okay, let's work some problems. Okay. This time we're told the grid lines are one foot. So on A, we've got a rectangle. I need to figure out the length and the width. So let's see, this side's one, two, three, four units, four feet. Bottom side, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight units. Eight feet. So our area is length times width. Four times eight. So the area in here is 32 square feet. Okay. 
And the idea, since we're on a grid, is we should be able to count the squares in there, right? Because each one of these grid squares is one square foot. So we should be able to count the squares and it'd be 32. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32. So 32 square feet in there. The idea of area. And what about B? B is not one of our nice shapes. Yeah, we could split it into a rectangle and a square and then figure out the area of each one and just add our answers together. And there's a couple of different ways you could split this one. Um, you could split it like this. That would give you a, square, a little square and a big rectangle. Or you could split it like this, get a rectangle and a square. Either way works. And I think I'm going to do it the first way. That way. So here, this one would be two by two. Our area for that part's four. And then one, two, three by one, two, three, four, five. Our area for this part's 15. So four plus 15, we get 19 and it's square feet. Let's add those two together. That's a really useful technique. Okay, we can figure out area for a whole bunch of different kind of weird shapes if we just split it into pieces that are shapes we can work with. And then you just add all the pieces together, add the areas of all the pieces together. Um, one more. We got a triangle, so area of a triangle, one half base times height. So here our vertical side would be our height, so one, two, three, four, five. Our bottom side would be the base, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, so it'd be half of 8 times 5, which is 40. I should write 8 times 5 then. So, yeah. And half of 40 is 20. 20 square feet. And it's fine if you just punch that in the calculator, 1 half times 8 times 5, that's fine. This one was just one that was reasonably easy to figure out without a calculator, so. Okay. Questions on that one? Triangle? I know a lot of this you've seen before, but it may have been a while since some of you have done these. Okay. All right, let's look at another one. So again, we've got a weird shape. It says we kind of have like a top-down view of a floor in a room. It says we want to paint the floor, so maybe it's concrete or something. We're going to finish it by painting. It says part A says determine the area we need to paint. So since it's a weird shape, we're going to want to split it into pieces that we can work with. Multiple ways we can do that kind of the limiting factor, we might be able to do it several ways on this one, but kind of the limiting factor is the numbers that it gives us. However we split it, we need to be sure that we can figure out the sides that we're missing. So one way I see to do it, you split it into two rectangles, there. So if we do that, for the rectangle on the left side, I need to know this left side of it, and then either the bottom or the top, either one will work, they'll be the same number. Well, we're not given either one of those directly, but we can figure it out. 
Am I see something we can do to figure out one of them? Yeah, that's good. So on the bottom, this whole bottom is 40. This much of it's 28. So if we do 40 minus 28, that'll tell us that from here over, this is 12 feet. And maybe it'd be better if I write it up at the top so we don't. That's 12 feet. 40 minus 28. Okay. What about the left side? Yeah, so this much of it's 7 feet, and the rest of it's 9 feet. So if we add those together, this whole thing is 16 feet. Okay. Now, if we can get the area of our left rectangle. That's 12 times 16. What is that? Uh, that's 192 square feet. And then what about our other rectangle? Yeah, you gotta be a little careful in there. So it's like nine feet this way, 28 feet this way. So we can do nine times 28. That's 252 square feet. And then we add those together. Four hundred forty-four square feet. That's our answer on A. B, we have a practical question. It says, if a gallon of paint will cover 350 square feet, how many gallons of paint are needed? You can do the division if you want to. Um, we can do 444 divided by 350. But you're just going to get one point something, like 1.26. But here we're trying to be practical about this. So if we're actually going to the store, how many gallons of paint will we have to buy? Two. One's not enough. Right, we can buy two and have some left over. Okay. They normally don't let you buy 0.26 gallons of paint. Right, so I have to buy two gallons. Two gallons there. Okay, we'll have some left over. That's how it goes. Right. Questions on that one? Had a lot of little steps going on on that one. Okay with them? Okay. Uh, right, let's look at this one. This one, to me, is a little bit easier than the last one. So, it says if carpeting costs $2 per square foot, we want to carpet rooms of size 12 by 16 and 15 by 20. How much would it cost to carpet the two rooms? So, find the area of the two rooms. Figure out how much square footage we need to cover. Multiply by two. We'll get it there. So um, room number one is 12 by 16. I think we just did that, but I forgot what it was. 192 square feet. Room number two, 15 by 20. I'm assuming these are rectangular rooms, it doesn't say. 300 square feet. So if we add those together, we need 492 square feet of carpet. $2 per square foot. So we multiply. Cost us $984. Okay. 
questions on that one? Nothing? If you've done any remodeling, you've probably done any TUPS calculations before. And if you go to the the blue store or the orange store, or you go to Lowe's or Home Depot, uh, stuff always is going to come in some weird amount, right? Like you're trying to put down flooring, and each box of flooring is going to be like 52.17 square feet or something. So I always end up having to buy more than you need. They're pretty smart. No questions on that one? Okay. Do a parallelogram. I think that's about the main one we haven't done here. Okay, so we've got a parallelogram. It says these are trusses for a bridge. Find the area of each of the trusses. Area of the parallelogram, which is the base times the height. It's a lot like a rectangle. So our base here is 13, the height is 6. Even though it's kind of upside down, the vertical line is what we use for our height. So 13 times 6. Yeah, 78, and on this one, our units were meters, so 78 square meters. You can just remember length times width for base times height. That keeps you from having to look up most of the formulas. Okay. All right. Okay. Um, Got another triangle here. I'm gonna skip, skip it. Do the trapezoid. So this one you can do two different ways. Okay, you can use the trapezoid formula. Okay, if we do the trapezoid formula, um, one half times base one plus base two times the height. So here you'd call one of these base one, one of these base two, and then what would our height be? We just have to have a vertical line. Yeah, so it's nine. It's the same as the other side. That'd be our height. Okay. So you can't do it that way. Or What else can we do? We can do it like a rectangle and a triangle. So if we're doing it that way, this is a rectangle that's nine feet tall and then plus this little piece on the bottom, 17 minus 12, so this little piece would be five feet. You can do it either way. So you'd add those two together. We'll do the formula. Okay, so if we do the trapezoid formula, so base one plus base two, doesn't matter which one you call which, times nine. So what do we get there? Got to 130.5 square feet. It's a little bit shorter if you do it that way, but you can do the rectangle and the triangle and add them together. Okay. Hanging in there, we're almost done, believe it or not. Okay, we're almost done. We don't have much left, so we've done this stuff with polygons. Okay. We got one other shape to deal with a little bit. Okay. That's a circle. Okay. Circle's not a polygon because it doesn't have sides, right? Well, you can think of it two different ways. You can either think it doesn't have sides or you can think it has an infinite number of sides. Uh, 
for us in here, it's probably better to think about a circle not having sides. Okay, so we want to think about perimeter and area with a circle. With a circle, we don't call it perimeter. We call it circumference. Okay. We're not adding all the sides together. We still want to know how far around the circle it is. So a couple of things to point out here. Um, anytime in Hawks, and we'll do the same thing on the test, that it asks for pi, we're going to estimate. Okay. We're going to call it 3.14. Pi is not 3.14. It's 3.1415, and it goes on and on and on and on. Right? It goes forever. So we're just going to estimate. If you use the pi key on your calculator, your answer is going to be a little bit off. Okay. So use 3.14 instead of hitting the pi button. Okay. And then the other things, just reminders. Okay. So we've got two versions. So if it gives you the radius, you can do 2 pi r. Or if it gives you the diameter, you can do pi times the diameter. Those are the same thing. And then area of a circle, a formula for that is pi r squared. So the same reminders, okay, pi use 3.14, r is a radius. So you get pi r squared. So area, it's a little bit stricter. If it gives us the diameter, we have to divide the diameter by two. So I'll just make a little note there. Just a reminder. Okay. All right, so let's look at a couple. All right, so got a fish tank here, got a circular top. The radius is 15 centimeters. We're trying to make a cover for the top of the fish tank. Okay. Just make it out of glass. I don't know if that's a good idea. I don't think you get air in there. But. Okay, so we want to find the area and circumference of the cover of the tank. So, top down view, okay. we're given the radius here 15 centimeters. Okay. So, if we want to find circumference, um, we can do the 2 pi r version. That'll be 2 times 3.14 times 15. And so what do we get there? That one comes out to 94.2. And with circumference, it's like perimeter. We just have regular units, just linear units, so centimeters. Okay. For area on this one, And it gives us the radius, so we're good to go there. So it'll be 3.14 times the radius squared. And you got to do the 15 squared part first. So you can punch it in your calculator all at once, but if you're doing it step by step, you got to do the 15 squared part first. On this one, you get 706.5. An area is square units, so centimeters squared. Okay. Questions on that one? Sorry, I have to try to balance on this for the ones of you that remember how to do this. It's super boring for the ones of you that have completely forgot how to do this. I'm probably going too fast. Try to shoot for the middle. Make everybody unhappy. Okay. No questions? Got no, one more, one more. So we can say we did a couple of circles. All right, one last one here. 
says find the area and circumference of a circle with a diameter of 10 inches. Here's this D this time. So circumference is no problem. We can just do pi D. So 3.14 times 10. 31.4 inches. But for area, we got to remember to find the radius first. Yes. Yes, so radius is 5. 10 divided by 2. Okay, so. 3.14 times 5 squared. You get 78.4 inches, but since it's area, they're square inches. You get 78.4? 78.5, sorry. Yeah, sorry about that. Hmm? Questions on those? Hmm? All right, that's it. You're free. Set through a boring section, so you're free now. Hmm. I didn't get on the signing sheet. I've got it up here. We'll do some three-dimensional stuff. Wednesday. Okay.